Hey guys, I'm Mike and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Right now you're going to watch one of our oldies videos made a few years ago. Now it has horrible quality video production, but amazing quality educational content. So before we get today's video started, I just wanted to let you know on some exciting new stuff that we're doing to totally remaster all of our 1200 videos here at SimpleNursing.com. So no more erasing the whiteboard with a sock. We're going to have videos that look just like this. Fibrillation fireworks is the best way to remember V-fib, the most deadly rhythm of all time. One of only two rhythms that you actually defibrillate or shock. Now the other one is pulseless v tack So what is V-fib? Well, ventricular fibrillation is a chaotic pattern of electrical activity in the ventricles in which electrical impulses arise from many different foci. All right, guys, so don't forget to do two things. First of all, subscribe right here to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any new videos coming out. And secondly, guys, try our free demo to our new quiz bank and over 1,200 videos not here on YouTube. So guys, click right up there. I'll leave the link up there for the rest of this video for you to do. So without any further ado, don't be scared, be prepared. Let's roll that oldies video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go over one of the biggest topics in nursing school. So I know pharmacology is really tough, especially when you get into pharmacology for psychiatric patients. So we're going to break down the pathophysiology first, and I'm going to show you guys exactly how to remember how these drugs work. Because honestly, you can study all day you want, but if you don't start with your pathophys, yeah, it's like you're wasting time studying. So let's get into our psychiatric medication here. <laughs> so one of the first things you have to realize is that psychiatric medications really affect three major neurotransmitters in the body. So you have dopamine, norepinephrine, as well as serotonin. Now, I broke all these down for you here, but really, in your brain, you have dopamine and serotonin that act as a reward and a happiness hormone in the body. Now, the book's going to tell you for dopamine inside the brain that, you know, you should remember it's reward, it's pleasure, it's motor function, it's compulsion, and you're trying to remember all these. Uh... I want you guys to organize it, organize it in your mind as D-O-P, D to the O to the P. Mm. So determination, basically getting a reward and motivation. Obsession, so that's why your patients with cocaine um, habits, methamphetamine habits, um, and also drug habits, usually stimulant habits, have an obsession, and this is what gets them addicted. And you also have pleasure receptors, and this is your dopamine reward. So remember dope, termination, obsession, and pleasure, okay? Now, the frontal cortex of your brain is most affected by dopamine as a neurotransmitter. Now, we're going to get into dopamine in the rest of the body and how it's a catecholamine and how it, it increases your blood pressure and all this other stuff. But guys, dopamine in the brain is way different than dopamine in the rest of the body. And I'll explain that later, but really the basic concept is your brain has a filter, almost like a coffee filter. And your brain has what's called a blood-brain barrier, the BBB, okay? And really, all the other stuff in the body cannot get directly into the brain without going through this blood-brain barrier first. Because if something really is toxic to your brain, uh, your brain will shut down and your body shuts down. So your body has this kind of um, border patrol, if you will, or security to not allow everything into the brain. All right, guys, the next one is your serotonin. Serotonin is your happiness hormone. So uh, I kind of remember this one as um, Siri from your iPhone. She makes it happy because you can ask her any question. Now, serotonin is in your book. They're going to say, remember mood, remember sleep, remember cognition, remember the memory. And you're trying to use serotonin to remember serotonin because you're using memory to remember this. 
But you know what? Forget the book. I want you guys to remember as ser, okay, for serotonin. And it's sleep, emotion, and also memory. You can also put remember, okay? So serotonin, remember, is that happy hormone that helps you sleep, helps you have emotion, and helps you to remember. Now, inside the brain, it almost acts like a racetrack. It goes all over the brain here. But really, it starts, and it's really a focal point, is in the hippocampus. And I remember the hippocampus is your memory in your brain. And you can just kind of remember it as like a big hippo walking on your college campus. And this big hippo just has a bunch of knowledge about books. There's a hippo there. I don't even know if that looks like a hippo. But maybe we can draw like a mouth here. There we go. Maybe that's a hippo. All right. So just a big um, hippo getting all this big knowledge on campus. That's your memory and helps you to remember in your hippocampus. Hippocampus. Next is your norepinephrine. And this primarily we see with our MAOI drugs, which we'll get into, as well as our atypical antidepressants. Okay? So just if you guys are like, ah, what are you talking about? Relax. We're just going over the patho. Okay? So norepinephrine, also known as levofed inside of pharmacology. Now remember, guys, almost all pharmacology starts inside the body. What we do in medicine is we extract it or we take a synthetic portion. We make it in the lab. And the synthetic portion, we have it in the lab and we just inject it into your body. Just like epinephrine, it's just fancy words for adrenaline. We take an adrenaline or we've copied the molecular structure, put it into a bottle. That's why if you're dying, we're going to shoot you up with adrenaline get your heart get going again. So norepinephrine is in the same category or the same family as your epinephrine or your adrenaline. They even call it noradrenaline sometimes. And they call it this because it's known as your stress hormone. Okay, And your stress hormone turns on your sympathetic nervous system. Increases that heart rate, increases that blood pressure, that fight and flight. Turns off your poop nervous system, or your PNS, peripheral nervous system, also known as your rest and digest. So no more gastric juices, no more digesting when your SNS is turned on. That's why with norepinephrine, a big thing with that is hypertension with our norepinephrine drugs especially our MAOI, we have a big, huge blood pressure alert. So, norepinephrine also controls your cognitive alertness. So, if someone is dying and we're having going into shock, usually um, septic shock, or it can be uh, other types of shock. Now, uh, norepinephrine is one of the last line drugs we use. My instructors in nursing school told me that you use levofed or you leave them dead. Because levofed is one of the last line drugs to get that blood pressure up, to squeeze and vasopress all that blood back to the vital organs, which is known as your sympathetic nervous system. Heart, brain, lungs, get all that oxygen, all that blood back to basically the most vital organs, the stuff that keeps you alive. So your norepinephrine helps with that cognitive alertness from your sympathetic nervous system, your brain, heart, lungs, usually mostly your brain, okay? So with norepinephrine, you can remember nor, no hesitation, on alert, and you can recall memory, okay? Now, norepinephrine acts peripherally as a vasopressor, or basically brings blood back into the brain heart, okay? But the thing is, is that norepinephrine also is that neurotransmitter that helps in the brain, and you guys can remember these as nor. So if you guys want to write that down, 
I'm going to expand this right now, and we're going to pretty much do a wrap up just a little bit more in detail. Here we go. Now, before we go on and before we get really specific with dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin, I want you guys to do something very important. Now, honestly, this is crucial to understanding your psychiatric medications. You need to get a note card and name them dope, ser, as well as N-O-R, okay? And what you need to do is copy my acronyms or my memory tricks here and put these on the front. This is going to be huge because when you get knee deep in, um, what's it called, SSRIs, MAOIs, all your atypical antidepressants, and then you get into your um, bipolar medications, this is going to be your lifeline. So, let me scoot you up and you guys can pause the video and be able to uh, copy that down. Then we'll go one by one and fill in the back of the card and I'll show you guys how to do that. All right, guys, thanks for watching only one part in our full video here at SimpleNursing.com. If you guys click the link right here, you can get access to our full course as well as our new quiz bank, which is really nifty. And also, guys, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel right here for all of our new videos coming out here on YouTube first before they go into our video vault right up there at SimpleNursing.com.